Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna to take a look at this thing over here, which is the Lenovo Think Center M. 75 N IOT. And this is a really kind of interesting PC because it's completely fanless, it's super low power, and it's based on an AMD processor. It is also very slow. And so that is something that we need to address as well. And having something like this M75 N IOT is interesting, but you kind of need a little bit of context because I think that's gonna be really important when we get to our review. And specifically for context, I will just note the fact that we did have the M90 N IOT, which is the Intel based version. And we did a piece on that. And we also have a video, we'll link that in the description. Now, these are the IOT versions. So you're gonna see that these actually have passively cooled chassis. There are the M75 N, which is the AMD version and the M90N, which is the Intel version that are not passively cooled, that are a little bit smaller actually. And we did the M90N, so the nano uh, non-IoT version for Intel. We are gonna do the AMD version of that. It's just stuck with UPS while I'm recording this video. So that's what it is. But I still thought that, hey, since we did the Intel version, we should also do the AMD version. And I know folks, a lot of folks on YouTube are very into AMD and, this is a Zen-based product that I'm kind of mediocre on, and I'm gonna explain why in this review. And while you're typing that angry comment on like, how could you say that an Intel version you might prefer over an AMD version, just hold out because I actually am gonna go through the reasons for that. And I think that you're probably gonna agree by the end of this. Now, if you just want an AMD-based product, just go buy the M75N IoT over the M90N because you just want AMD and nothing else is gonna make you happy. If you kind of wanna look at specs, I think it gets a lot more complex than that, but I can totally see why Lenovo has an AMD version and what the value prop is. So let's get to the hardware. Now, the first thing is that this is a 0.35 liter chassis. So if you look at our Project Tiny Mini Micro series, those are generally one liter PCs from Lenovo, HP, and Dell. But this is definitely a little bit smaller because it's, you know, basically a third of the size. Now we've done like over 30, I think, Tiny Mini Micro series reviews. So if you wanna go learn about the little bit bigger options, I think that's totally worth it. But this is kind of really designed more for like the industrial edge and really kind of putting out as in more of an edge box, whereas those Tiny Mini Micro PCs are more of kind of designed for like office environments. So they are kind of different segmentation. And one quick thing on this that you might not know because I didn't know actually the first time that we got the M90N uh, IoT, I, I just didn't know that there are like basically two ways that you're gonna see the system. So this first one you kind of see, or this view that you see here, you can kind of see that we have this kind of, I don't know, cross patch on this or cross hatch on this. And then if you pull off and it's not actually that easy to do, but you can actually go pull off the top and then you kind of have this secondary view. You actually have a cover and this cover is basically meant to go put on top of the chassis, which is basically acting as a heat sink here. And you put the cover on and then that's supposed to protect you so that if you touch it during operation, you don't burn yourself. So this is actually kind of an important piece, but I think it looks cooler without it. So you might see a lot of photos in this without. And there actually is a little warning label that says, oh, it's hot to the touch right over here. Okay, and let's get to the front of the system and see what this thing has. Now, something that is a lot different on these IoT systems versus the non-IoT systems is that you actually get two serial console ports. And these are useful, um, you know, number one, if you have some IT equipment, you might wanna go and, you know, kind of automate over a serial interface. They're still super popular. They're also really popular if you have things like machines on a factory floor or something like that. There are a lot of machines in the world that run on still serial connections. And so not having to have like a little USB dongle that could get pulled out or something like that. And instead having, you know, things like serial console ports that you can go and screw into this, I think is actually something that is, you know, really useful. It's also probably why they take up a huge portion of this front of this chassis. Now, the other things that you're gonna see here are you're gonna see a total of three USB ports. Now there's a USB type C port and there are two type A ports. The USB C port says 10 because this is a gen two 10 gigabit per second port. There is another USB, so a type A port that also says 10 because that is a gen two 10 gigabit per second port. And so you might think that, oh, that middle one, that is obviously a just to, you know, five gigabit per second gen one port, right? The answer to that is no. That is actually a USB 
2.0 port. And that is really the kind of like the first difference between the M75N IoT and the, you know, M90N IoT is just the fact that this was a 10 gigabit per second port on the Intel version. And so there is kind of, to me at least, a big difference between going from like a USB 3 Gen 2 port to a USB 2 port. And so that is one reason I actually kind of like the Intel model a little bit better. A common feature though, is that we do get a headset jack. So if you do want to run audio, you could totally do that with this. All right, moving to the back of the system, what you see is that we get our kind of standard Lenovo, you know, laptop power input. And so that's the first thing that we have here. We then have a display port for a display out. Now, on the tiny mini micro nodes, you typically will get at least two, sometimes three display outputs. So you might be thinking like, hey, that's, that's only one that kind of stinks. Uh, but there's actually a reason for that. And there is another display output on this that we're gonna get to in a sec. The next port that you're gonna see is that we have a 10 gigabit per second Gen 2 USB type A port. And then we get to a type C port that's also 10 gigabit per second port. But that one can also, you can use a dongle and get display port out on that as well. And so you actually kind of get two display outputs, except for the fact that you probably need a dongle to go do the USB-C one. Next, what you're gonna notice is that we do have a NIC port and it's a single one gigabit ethernet NIC. We're probably gonna show some photos since it is gonna be a little bit hard to see here, but you can kind of see that we have the M 90 n iot on the bottom and you see that we have two gigabit ethernet NICs, and then we only have one on the m75 n iot and the reason for that is that this is i guess maybe a little bit lower cost of a platform uh, and so that second nick is removed so if you saw the m90 n iot one you're like oh that could be a firewall that's so cool and because it has two nicks and that's gonna be awesome and then you kind of look at the amd one you're like oh that that might even be lower power that could be a really good option well actually there's not that second nick so you might want to rethink your plans on that frankly i think it's a total bummer adding a real tech gigabit ethernet nick is I mean, tens of cents, it's not like super expensive. So I do kind of wish that there was that option, but okay, Lenovo, I get it. You're trying to save costs. One other little bit that you're gonna notice is this does have a Kensington lock port. These systems, it's actually kind of interesting. They get deployed in a lot of edge deployments where they're just kind of like sitting out in the open. And so something you actually have to do is think about like, hey, how do I secure this? Now, of course, if somebody like really wants this and it's just kind of sitting in the open, they're gonna come around with bolt cutters or something like that and you know go pull off, sure. I mean, that could totally happen, but at least it gives you a little bit more security than just like if it's an office, just kind of like leaving it there and then you know having to worry about somebody just walking away with it. You're also gonna notice that we have a Wi-Fi nub because this does have 802.11ac Wi-Fi. We'll talk about that more when we get inside. Okay, so opening the chassis is super easy. You basically have two screws that I already took off and then you basically can just open up the chassis. Something that is a little bit different on these systems versus the tiny mini micro ones is the fact that there is a lot less that's serviceable in this type of system in order to get it to be smaller. Now we just talked about the Wi-Fi, but this over here, this is the Intel Wi-Fi, so 802.11ac Wi-Fi. It doesn't have Wi-Fi 6, which is again, kind of a bummer, but okay, this is a very low power, low end IoT device, sure. And it's also similar to what the M90N IoT has. Something that you're gonna see here is that we have a Western Digital 128 gigabyte NVMe SSD. This is a smaller M.2 2242 module right here, but there is an M.2 2280 module possible over here on this. That's actually both a PCIe by two slot and it's also, it could also run SATA. So you can kind of pick what kind of SSD you wanna go put in there, but it also gives you a little bit more space. So if you wanna have like a second drive or you wanna bigger capacity drive, you can totally go do that. The last little feature that I really wanted to go focus on is kind of in this kind of area up here, you're gonna see that there is another M.2 slot and that's really for a like LTE modem. You could actually go put that in a device like this. There's also the little SIM card slot. And so between those two things, what you can actually go do and you can kind of see that over here, Lenovo has the, uh, I guess, antenna output. So you could actually go put an antenna, wire something into this area, and then use that to really, I guess, get your LTE connection. So if you really want a real IoT experience where you're not necessarily just kind of dealing with a Wi-Fi or a wired LAN solution or something like that, you could go put an LTE solution on this and then get something that is LAN independent and get a wireless WAN connection. Something that is a little bit different between this and the tiny solutions is that the CPU and the memory are actually soldered on. So you can upgrade them. This particular board came with a four gigabyte configuration. So we had four gigabyte, 128 gigabyte configuration on this. 128 gigabyte being the solid state drive, whereas RAM is four gigabytes. And then the processor is super interesting in this as well. You might be able to see it here, but this is actually the AMD Athlon Silver 
sticker. Specifically, this has the AMD Athlon Silver 3050E CPU, which is a two core, four thread CPU. But the interesting part is that it runs at only six watts. That also means that the clock speeds are much lower. This only has a 1.4 gigahertz base clock, goes up to 2.8 gigahertz and so you are definitely sacrificing a lot of speed in a modern processor to hit that six watt power level the flip side of course is the fact that this thing can be passively cooled there are no fans in this which means that it's very quiet and it basically doesn't cost a lot to operate because you know there's not a lot of power consumption on a device like this now the system itself actually came with a 65 watt power brick lenovo power brick we could even, we couldn't even get to 20 watts on this thing uh let alone anything up in like the 65 watt range uh the vast majority of this uh we're actually running at like you know closer to like 10 watts or something like that most of the time so i mean you know, at the end of the day, like you do not need a 65 watt unless you're doing like charging or something like that off the USB ports. This is a very, very low power device and it is also lower power than the Intel based solution. But in terms of performance, the Intel solution is definitely quite a bit faster. I mean, the Intel solution is at least 25 to 30% depending on the benchmark faster. And so I would say that, you know, from a performance, if you're a performance nut perspective, yeah, you're probably gonna want the Intel version over the AMD version. But in terms of power consumption, the AMD version is a little bit lower. So I could totally see if you said, hey, you know, I value, I don't necessarily need a whole lot of CPU performance. I'm basically just ingesting things from, you know, a couple of serial devices, and then I'm putting them over, you know, either on Wi-Fi, wired LAN, or I'm gonna go put them on an LTE modem or something like that. Maybe I'm doing some analytics on my logs before I go send stuff off. I mean, something like this is actually quite useful for that kind of use case. But I also wanna talk about pricing because pricing is also a big deal in this. Now there are definitely operating cost differences between if you have a little bit higher po power device versus a lower power device, sure, I totally get that. But at the same time, this device I think we got for something like $200. They sometimes go on deals and you can get them for about $130. Um, but this one over here, which is the AMD version, we got for $188. So it was about $12 less expensive than we got the Intel version for. You may see higher prices, by the way, on the Lenovo.com site, but there are also kind of regular deals and sometimes you can find like refurb units or whatever and get prices that are even lower than what we got. And you're just gonna have to shop around. We shop around because we're doing this on a very low budget and we're basically selling t-shirts uh, and sweatshirts and stuff on our merch shop, which you can find a link to in the description to pay for these. And so we don't really have a huge budget. So we just gotta kind of get the cheapest ones that we can possibly get to be able to do these reviews. But even with that there is one difference on the back of this that I think you might be able to see. If you look at the top corner up here, what you're gonna see is the Windows logo because this actually did come with Windows and this is a Linux version that we got. You can run things like Windows 10 IoT on it, but this did not come with a Windows license. So basically for that $12 less that we spent, we got one less high-speed USB port. We lost one NIC. We did not get the Windows license. And by the way, you can run Linux on this one as well. And we got a lower performance, although lower power processor on the AMD version. So personally, just for me, the trade-offs that we made going from that original version that was like $200-ish to the $188 version that we got from a you know kind of similar deal, uh, you know, we basically saved $12 six months later. And I, I hate to say it, but I, I don't think that those trade-offs are really worth that $12 differential. I fully get that there are other people that are gonna have different opinions. And so that's why I just kind of want to present the hardware, show you what this is, show you kind of some of the differences between the two, because you know what, deals change and pricing changes over time. So you never know what you can basically find. And you may be looking at this a month or two in the future and like, hey, is this a good box? Like, what's, what's the deal? What's the difference between the M75 and IoT and the M90? and IoT, like hopefully we're going through and answering some of those questions for you. So that way, when you do see different pricing, you can maybe jump on it if you would want something like this. Okay, so what's the final verdict? Well, number one, I do really like this system. It's fanless, it doesn't make any noise. You can go stick it somewhere and pretty much nobody's even gonna notice that it's there if it's like hidden behind something because it just has such a low impact on its environment. And I think that's basically the point. Like a lot of people, you know, we have switches and stuff that sometimes you have to go console into and equipment that sometimes you have to go console into. And so having just kind of hard mounted serial ports, I really like and having something that's low power just kind of stick and you don't really have to worry about the operating cost because it is pretty low power. 
I really like that. I also, however, think that the two core, four thread, 1.4 gigahertz processor is not really that fast. The four gigabytes of memory that you can't upgrade is kind of a bummer. I would definitely like to see an eight gigabyte model or upgradable memory, which would be nice as well. And then also just the fact that there isn't that second ethernet port, I think is kind of a bummer. So to me, at least the fact that this is a lower numerical number the M 75 NIOT versus the M90 NIOT. I do think that it makes sense that this is positioned as a lower end model, but we do need to make sure that pricing is commensurately lower to be able to kind of offset that delta, right? And hey, one of the exciting things is that if you haven't noticed, we are going to be starting to do our Project Tiny Mini Micro reviews and that picking up that series again. And I know we've been kind of taking a little hiatus over the summer while we've been doing the move from Mountain View, California to Austin, Texas. But now that things are starting to stabilize a little bit, we can get back into a groove and we're definitely going to have more of these. In fact, there's another one already with the video editor as I'm recording this. And hey, if you did like this video, why don't you give us a like, click subscribe, turn on notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.